you get two strong people. They're going to butt heads. She's going to be determined to not let you control or hurt her. And he is going to be determined to not let her control. His reasons may be different than hers, but they wind up both the same. So when you get to that place where you keep on butting heads, maybe, just maybe, you will waken up and see, hey, this isn't the will of God. This is not what he intended. What's wrong? Maybe, and I say just maybe, you will search within yourself and get on your knees and say, search me, O God, and see if there be any iniquity in me. See where my part in this, because you see, one can't butt his head against the other as long as it's only one that's butting. There is nothing to butt. It takes two to butt heads. And when you find yourself in trouble like this, and you will find yourself in trouble like this daily, day in and day out, because you have never found the secret to repent of what you believe and think is right when it is not. You may think you're right, so what good does it do you? Being right, what good does that do you? Does it make everything all right? Being right, does do you feel good after you butt heads with somebody that you think you're so much better than? Because you are right. Do you feel better after butting heads with somebody that you feel I'm the head, so she needs to submit? Never dreaming for one moment when God looks down at you, he sees a person who is not loving his wife the way he should, his, like his own body. He, <laughs> who are you fooling? Who are you deceiving? Do you think that you deceive God with this? Do you think that you are telling God what is right and what is wrong? Do you think because you claim the word and you know it, you can repeat it and you can throw it at her and you could make her submit because you throw the word at her. You throw, I am the head, so therefore you must submit. Forgetting altogether that due benevolence means respect to respect. Most of the time, most men have not been taught respect. If a woman is wise and she's a mother, the first thing she will teach her child is to respect. Go look up the word. Go Google it and find out what respect means. Respect means you won't cross a certain line. But unfortunately, in, with married couples, knowing the most intimate things about each other, whenever you get angry, you use it against each other. So you're, you've crossed the line of trust. You can no longer trust that person. Some even go out to the pastors and tell the pastors their whole side. Whether it's a woman pastor or a man pastor, she or he betrays their spouse by telling it all. How do I know all this stuff? I either did it, or I repented of it, or I never touched it. Whatever. I'm not here needing it because I've overcome it. Well, however I overcome it is none of anybody else's business. The fact is that God gives me this wisdom to help you, not me. It is to help you to understand where you're going. I already have the eyesight to see where I went and to see how to get out of it. My husband and I both had to learn. It's not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. It works both ways. Like I said before, it's like looking in the mirror. You see evil, he sees evil. You see unrighteousness, he sees unrighteousness. You see hatred, he thinks you hate him. You see that you're the only one getting into heaven nine times out of ten. You have been able to convince him that you are the only one that's going to get into heaven because, oh, you go to church. Oh, you talk to pastors. Oh, you read your Bible. 
but there's no love in what you do. There's no love connected to that. He feels that. He feels it so strongly that he cannot bring himself to be like you. He cannot bring himself to believe this is God. But, oh, you're much better than he is. You have a prayer closet. You have obeyed God to the limit. You know everything. Just like the spouse. He does the same exact thing. If he has God at all, he looks down his nose at you and says, you don't know nothing without me. Because God will never give you anything without me. Lie. That's a lie straight from hell. He poured out his spirit on all flesh. Not some flesh, not a little bit of flesh, but all flesh. You make demands while well, I work all day long. So I demand my supper be on the table. I demand the right time. You don't have nothing to do all day long. How do you know? How do you know that that person doesn't have anything else to do? How do you know they're not striving in their prayer closet trying to find out the reason why things have gone sour, things have gone to the bottom level? How do you know? How do you know what it took to take care of the baby, take care of the children? How do you know? How do you know that you can dare walk through the door and burst through it and and uh, judge and condemn and use the word of God to prove, I got God. And you are nothing without me. That's not Jesus. Anybody with a tiny bit of common sense would know that is not Jesus Christ. He never acted like that and he never will. That's why I put a, 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 a tape out. How did Jesus treat his women? Did he treat them like that? Oh, no, he didn't. Well, she won't go to church. And because she won't go to church, I punched her in the mouth. I showed her who's boss. <laughs> no, you showed God who you are. You didn't show her nothing because chances are she still can't see God in you and never will. Because you will not repent of what you do wrong, but you demand she repent of what you think she does wrong. And then all of you wonder why. Why has this come upon us? Why can't we seem to get out of it? Why, 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 God? Why aren't you here? Why aren't you saving me? Why aren't you stopping this? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Why, why, why? Ah, uh, <laughs> can you fool God? Now ask yourself that question. Can you fool God? Remember, he said, take all of your thoughts captive before Jesus Christ. Take them captive. How do you take thoughts captive? When you ponder on things. And something comes before you, the forefront of your mind, and it's not right, and you know it's not right. But you think, God don't care. Pfft. God isn't going to make me this. God isn't going to trouble over this. <laughs> It'll be all right. Got to work it all out. Oh, yeah. I, you know, my pastor told me that. He tells me lots of it. Don't you worry. God will work it out. He'll teach her a lesson or two. He'll show her who's boss in that house. <laughs> You're not boss. You're nobody's boss. That isn't what God called you to. God didn't call you to be a lord, a dictator, a manipulator, a liar. None of this. He didn't call you to any of it. But you still hang on. Ah, oh, that pause was an interruption with my geeks. They helped me so much. The kindness and the generosity of this company is amazing. They understand my blindness. They understand my lack of understanding for certain things. And they even have watched my videos and like them.
So they're very, very good to me. And I am thankful to have them because without them, I couldn't load videos. But we will go on to understanding how, as human beings, not just your husband, not just your wife, but all of us, we deceive ourselves. You think God is deceived? No. We deceive ourselves. And how do we deceive? By a wicked heart of either unbelief that he meant what he said. When he said there are certain things to do with your spouse, to love her as your own body, I, I don't have to do that. My pastor told me she better submit. My friends, when we get into that Bible study, we come to the conclusion a woman has no right to have anything. She has only right she has is to be in the kitchen so you chain her to it. To be in the bedroom so you use her when you want. So what difference is her between her and the whore? What difference is that? You use her. Oh, well, you give her room and board. So that's payment for your use for her. Uh, haven't you woken up to what God sees? Is there a clue in your brain to what God sees you doing? And then you carry it farther by demanding that she submit to what you know is unnatural. That's your sin. That's not hers. Most women that I've seen crying, they love their husbands with all their heart, but they can feel the demonic pressure. They can feel it so bad because, you see, oh, they have no right to feel that. They're, they're not anointed. I am. What right do they have to feel that coming out of me? Well, if you're disobedient, they're going to feel it. If you hate God as he is and change the creature and make him like the creator and change the creator into the image of the creature, <laughs> you're going to have problems. You can say what you want. You can do what you want. You can go where you want. You can be as you want. You can have as many different doctrines as you want. You can have as many different friends, how many different prayer meetings, how many Bible studies. But in the end, in private, where no one else sees but God, you're going to have to face him. You're not going to face him for what you did out there in the world because ah, everybody is watching and I have got to be right on. I spent hours praying over that message. Never mind that you don't have enough to give it without praying over it. You don't have enough to give anybody without spending hours praying over one message. Wow. You know why you don't have enough? Because you won't live it. It's too hard. God, you know it's too hard. You know I can't do that. Instead of praying and saying, God, I can't do that. Help me. Help me because only through you can I succeed. Only through you can I see things as they are. Why would you want your eyes blinded? Why would you want everything your way? Have you proven that you created the world and the earth? Have you proven that you died for others? Have you proven that you were able to do that? Oh, I see the man that twists this all up and that's okay. That's his problem. Far be it from me to stop a man from self-destruction. That's his problem. Far be it from me. I got my hands off of it. The truth is the truth. Sometimes it's dirty. Sometimes it's rotten. Sometimes it's filthy. But you tell the truth. If God called you to tell the truth, then you tell it. If you even think that God called you to tell the truth, then you tell it. But make sure it's the truth and not your opinion. Make sure that you're not bringing harm to a lot of people.
Make sure that you could take on the responsibility of saying, I know. Because it's written in the word where Jesus Christ said, now that you know, now that you say you know, I'm going to be holding you more responsible. I'm telling you all the things about the way Jesus Christ is. I'm not telling it to you according to a dead word, according to a word that you just repeat. Oh, protect yourself. Protect yourself from thinking and, and repeat it over and over and over and over so nothing else can get in. Just repeat it over and over and over. It's still dead. It's still, you killed it. You stopped it. It's still dead. You took the living word and you put it into your brain as a dead word. That's not God's doing. His word is alive. For all who will listen to it, his word is alive. Now, there was a prophet that prophesied a certain person was going to become something. And his reason for it was is he has a certain amount of, of righteousness in him. <laughs> Every man on earth that ever read that Bible has a certain amount of righteousness to be seen in him. Never mind that he's been a devil. Never mind that he's been destroying this nation. Never mind that he's been doing all of this evil with children. Never mind all of that. He has a certain amount of righteousness within him. So he can pretend with that certain amount. And you're going to be held responsible for believing him and not believing the word of God. Not believing that he needs to show fruits. And like I said, like the Lord said in his word, you have the right to try those fruits. You take a fruit and you pluck it. You pull it off of that stem of that tree or bush. And you squeeze it. That means you pressure it. Is it sweet? Is it hard and sour? What is it? And then you bite into it. You just clench your teeth into it and take a big bite out of it. Now you either spit it out of your mouth because it's sour or hard, or you swallow it because it's sweet. Sweetness and devilishness does not go together. Sweetness goes with kindness. Sweetness doesn't go with demands. Sweetness doesn't go with force. Sweetness, gentleness, and kindness is the nature of God. It is the virtue of God. It is the moral virtue, virtue of Jesus Christ. He was kind. He was gentle. He was easily entreated when they came to him and said, Lord, have mercy on us. What did he say? He will. He did. He healed them. So the one that has God, and, and is easily entreated, he will hear the cry of his wife, have mercy on me. Please don't force me to do something I don't want to do. Please don't force me to behave myself the way I feel it's wrong. Please don't do this to me. But if you have no mercy and you have no compassion, you know what you're going to see? You're going to see, but I'm the man and I'm head. You have to submit. Now, if you're wise enough not to do that outright to her, then you manipulate her through her feelings and love for you. Oh, honey, this, this is God. It's okay with God. Sure it is. Go read it. Go read how he says that those of you that judge others you're not going to escape it yourself because you not only enjoy what they do but you do the same things he wasn't talking about just one or two things oh you sit down and you gossip and you backbite with well, that man that 
rotten preacher. He hurt my feelings and he did this to me and he did that to me. And we are just going to do something about it. God is the one that's going to come and get him. God is going to get him. <laughs> God will get you for that. <laughs> I can't help but laugh. I remember watching people think like this, pray like this, and act like this. Well, God's going to defend us. We're allowed to do anything we want. Why, we are anointed. <laughs> and I'm not talking about just men. I'm talking about women, too. Oh, God's going to punch that man right in the mouth. God's going to stop him dead in his tracks. God is going to fix him. You just go ahead. And you just wait on God because God will take him out of your life, even if he has to kill him to do it. He'll move. He'll send you a better one. <laughs> wow. That is how they talk. And they're in powerful ministries. They are in uh, Pentecostal ministries. And that's how they talk. Oh, <laughs> If you don't like what you got, just wait. God will fix it. After all, you are anointed. You're allowed to do anything you want because that anointing says so. No, it doesn't. Oh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't teach that and it doesn't preach that. That anointing is not even for you. That anointing is for everyone else, but you forgot it was never given to you for you to use for yourself, for your own personal thoughts and feelings, to destroy whoever you feel like destroying, for stopping whoever you feel like stopping. Now, if I was here naming names and telling you and taking their books, taking their ministry out of context and sit down and saying they're doing the... Oh, you talk about a spanking? <laughs> I'm, I've got too much the fear of God to do that. I'd be afraid of finding out that somewhere in those books is an anointing that I'm picking on. Somewhere in their videos, there is an anointing that I'm picking on. Somewhere the Holy Spirit has led that person, be it man or woman. I might not like their works, but if you notice, I've told you, there's pastors I wouldn't even touch because they have an anointing on their life to protect them from correction from people that don't know what they're doing. It, their life is in the hands of God to correct them. The only kind of people that can point them out and go up to them and call, write them a letter and tell them is a prophet. A prophet can do that. They have the authority. And when their protection rises up, that prophet has power over it all. You know why? That prophet was sent, sent by God to stop this nonsense. But then if it was only nonsense, it would be different. But it's destroying people. It's destroying the minds and hearts of God's people. And God has been fed up for a long time. So therefore, he says, hey, we're going to bring it out into the open. They wouldn't listen to me. I sent them this one, to, and they wouldn't listen. I sent them this, and they wouldn't listen. I told them this, and they wouldn't listen. And it's been over and over and over and over. And they still hate women. So I sent a woman. <laughs> God was so good to me. He told me, he did, he said, Marion, I sent a woman because I'm fed up. They wish to God they had what you had. They can't get it. Why? Because they won't live the life. They want what they want, and they don't care what they have to do to get it. They don't care who they have to hurt. They don't care if their own children suffer. They don't care if their own wife suffers. They don't care if their own husband suffers. They don't care about nothing. But I, I, I. And then they will point the finger at you and say, oh, she said I. She said I. I. She's telling you I. I. How many times she's telling you I. <laughs> wow. 
because they don't realize. They see a reflection of themselves. When they come in contact with the things of God, they see a reflection of themselves. That's what they see. They're looking at it. She's saying this. <laughs> oh, God is so good. God is so, so good. He is a marvelous wonder to me.